Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how I work with images in Lightroom that are underexposed and overexposed. What you'll find is that you'll be able to salvage images that are drastically underexposed using this technique. As far as images that are overexposed, you don't have as much leeway, but I'll demonstrate that as well. Now we'll start out with this image. I think this is a common situation where you would have an underexposed image when you're taking a photograph of a sunset. And you can see the sun looks okay, but everything else is pretty much drastically underexposed. What I would do is I would go to the unprocessed RAW file. In this case, it was a Sony A7R4. And I'll go to the highlight slider and I'll take that all the way down. I'll go to the shadow slider. I take that all the way up. That's the first thing I do. Then I'll go to the exposure slider and I'll just eyeball the image and move this because it's underexposed. I'll move it to the right till it looks okay. Then I'll go to the whites and blacks and I'll get a white and black, uh, white and black point. And the way I like to do it is on my Mac, I hold in the option key. On the PC, it's the alt key. Click on the whites slider. You'll get an entirely black screen. Move that to the right till I start to see it start to you know, come through where the sun is. That looks pretty good. Do the same thing for blacks. This time you get a totally white screen. Move this to the left while holding in that option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC till you get some clipping there. I don't mind clipping the shadows a little bit. And there is my processed underexposed sunset. Let's go to another image that is underexposed a bit more. Same beach, different day. What we're going to do here again is go to the highlight slider and take that all the way down, the shadow slider all the way up, go to the exposure slider and just eyeball it. Just keep moving that up till it looks like it's properly exposed. Then I'll go to the white slider. Again, I'll get that white point holding in the option key on my Mac. You can see I'm already clipping up there a little bit. Don't mind clipping those brightest areas up there. We'll do the same thing for the black slider. Clip, click there. Move this to the left. Still, we start to get some of that color come through. And then, then on this image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and readjust the exposure a little bit. Just pull that down just a touch. So there is how I would process this underexposed image. I mentioned that you could go pretty far with an underexposed image. Here is another image that is drastically underexposed. That previous image was taken with a Nikon Z62. This was taken with a Nikon Z72. And you can see that it's really drastically underexposed. Again, I'll go to the highlight slider, take that all the way down, shadow slider all the way up. I'll go to the exposure slider and move that to the right till it starts to look decent. Then we'll go to the, the um, white slider, hold in the option key again, and get a white point. Same thing for the black slider. And then we could make vibrance. So there is my properly adjusted, drastically underexposed image. There's the before. And there's the after. And if you, you know, need to expose it a little more, you can see it was a five total stops underexposed. So quite a bit. Now, if you find that it needs even more brightness, what you could do is go to the tone curve. Make sure you're in the point curve right here. This is the second curve from the left. Put a point right in the middle and then push it up this way. And then you can make it brighter that as well. So you could add a little more brightness to an image that is drastically underexposed. Now, I mentioned that with overexposure, you don't have as much leeway. Let's go to this image. This again was taken with the Nikon Z72. You can see that it's uh, pretty bad. It's, it's overexposed quite a bit. Same technique though. Highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. When you get to the exposure slider, of course, instead of moving it to the right, you're going to move it to the left. And you can see then we're starting to get a decent looking image. Then we'll get a white and black point the same exact way, holding the option key. Move that to the right until we still bleeding through. Back it off. Same thing here. Add some vibrance. And you're done. There's the before. And there's the after. There's the before. And there's the after. Okay. One more. This is drastically overexposed. And I mentioned that you don't have as much leeway with a drastically overexposed image as we will with a drastically underexposed image. Now with this one, same thing. Highlights down, shadows up. Go to the exposure slider, start moving it to left, and you'll see that it just doesn't look right. There's just 
too many pixels that are just totally blown out. No data is there at all, and it's just not salvageable. So when you shoot digitally, you have a lot more um, range, exposure latitude into the shadows than you do into the highlights. So you always want to be careful when you're shooting digitally to make sure that you don't overexpose. If you're going to make a mistake, you want to make the mistake the other way. It's okay to underexpose a bit. If you're shooting negative film, on the other hand, it's the opposite. So if you're thinking of getting into film shooting, uh, don't do that. Make sure with um, when you're shooting film that you don't underexpose. You want to make sure that, if anything, if you're going to make a mistake, that it's slightly overexposed. And of course, film doesn't have the same exposure latitude as digital sensors do. So you have a lot less margin for error when, error when you're shooting film. One more thing about film, if you're shooting positive film, that is slide film, then it's more like digital. You have to make sure that you don't lose the highlights. So if you're going to make a mistake there, it's very slightly underexposed. But there is a lot less exposure latitude with slide film, positive film, than there is negative film. So there's my little lesson on film today, and that's how I go about editing images that are underexposed, and or overexposed. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.